France, a nation of 66 million people, built on the tripartite foundation. Liberty, equality, fraternity. The Republic is diverse, but in many ways, divided. Government, people, minorities running on different tracks. Many are struggling with identity, and thousands of his sons are turning away from France and towards radicalization. A trap that has had devastating consequences. The list of victims keeps growing and the number of memorials gets bigger. We've come to France to find out why and how this has happened and what's being done to stop it. This is a class like no other, a lesson not in math, French or science, but in radicalization. This woman is Latifa Ibn Ziaten, a French Moroccan mother of five. The reason she's here is because of two men. The first, her son, Imad Ibn Ziaten, a 30 year old soldier. The second, Mohamed Meda, his killer. Their paths crossed in Toulouse in March 2012. Mera was a radicalized petty criminal who decided to take revenge on what he saw as symbols of France. Le but of the decision is important. Because when I came to Toulouse and when I heard these young people say that Mohamed Marah is a martyr, he is a hero of Islam, he put France at genoux, I said, my God, it's there you have to work. It's there you have to take the hand. Moi, je vois beaucoup de la souffrance. La souffrance que ça peut pousser un jeune qui devient radical. C'est la souffrance. Ça va, tu rattrapé quand même. Mera went on to kill six more people that week, including four at a Jewish school. Though the problem of radicalization was obvious to many, the government turned a blind eye, calling him a lone wolf. And in the meantime, more youths were falling into extremism. That's nowhere more evident than here in Sevran, a town of 50,000 people northeast of Paris. A melting pot of nationalities and religions, where the middle and popular classes live together. It was here that Veronique Roy and her husband Thierry raised two sons. He looks like a little angel. Conten, the youngest, followed his father's passions for football and music. He converted to Islam as he turned 20 in 2012, a decision welcomed by his family at first. On était dans une relation de lien très forte avec Quentin, pas de conflit familial. Il s'entendait avec moi, avec son père, avec son frère. Bah, on n'était pas d'accord sur tout, et en l'occurrence pas d'accord sur sa pratique religieuse que je trouvais trop intégriste. Mais entre un intégriste et quelqu'un qui basculerait dans l'éventuel terrorisme. Il a basculé dans un combat euh, djihadiste. Conten had much more than many other young people here. The town's prospects are bleak. Youth unemployment stands at 40%. Almost double the national average. Locals complain of rampant drug crime. The government lists the town as a sensitive urban zone. As it only became clear later, recruiters had been operating in the town and they were working from makeshift mosques. Conten and his friends used to come here to pray. This actually used to be a mosque, but the city has bricked it up after complaints from angry parents. Many deny Daesh recruiting was going on here, although 15 of the town's young men have gone to Syria and Iraq, including Conten. In September 2014, he left the family house and never came back. A few weeks later, he told his parents he joined Daesh in Syria. We know that it's because of bad encounters that he's done, and especially in the city where we live. And the recruiters, the pressure of hate, they are in France. They isolate the young people. They cut the relationship with the family, with the friends, with the work, because to be a good Muslim at a moment, you can't live with non Muslims. You can't live with non Muslims. Avec des non musulmans, tu ne peux plus vivre dans un pays de mécréance. Euh, si tu veux plaire à Dieu, prouve-le. Et Quentin est parti pour ça. 
By the time the government started to realise something was wrong, it was too late. November 13, 2015. The worst terror attack on French soil since World War II. Coordinated, calculated, cold. Seven sites, 130 dead. A trail of shootings and suicide bombings ran across the capital. And when the smoke cleared, it became apparent five of the ten known attackers were sons of France. Some had travelled to Syria before coming back to attack their motherland. Nomoke Sedibe was the deputy head of security at the Bataclan Concert Hall on November the 13th. This day, in fact, there are all the nationalities, all the religions that have been touched. So it's not a question of, unfortunately, we will say death together. But, but, justly, people, we have to be conscious that on ne peut pas accuser une religion comme la religion musulmane, puisque moi-même je, je suis musulman, la plupart des agents de sécurité sont aussi musulmans, et puis dedans il y a eu beaucoup de, de musulmans aussi euh, décidés, que ce soit au Bataclan ou au Stade de France ou sur les terrasses de café. Thanks to the help of Nomoke's team, Charles Nador managed to hide in the ceiling of the concert hall. He survived the attack. A year later, we met him at the café where he sought refuge after escaping the Bataclan. He's still trying to recover from the trauma. I was like in some kind of shock and was like hyperactive or something. I was like very, very focused on everything. I was very, very nervous. I was like, I was on, co on cocaine or something, really. And this phase has been, was long for, for a period of like 10, 10 days. I've been like this and after this, I. I had an, a second period, I was like more apath apathic, more tired, I was exhausted of everything because of this, this was a kind of nervous breakdown actually. A history teacher, father of two, Charles has been trying to understand why his countrymen would want to kill him. Do you blame them though? No, I don't. Actually, I don't. Of I don't excuse them but I don't blame them. I think they had some kind of weakness. As part of his recovery process, he decided to write a book with two friends, not only to describe his experience, but also to put it in context. Questions of how and why not only consume survivors, but professionals. Experts say it's usually not just one thing that leads someone down that road, but a combination of many. Il faut qu'il y ait un discours qui fasse basculer la tentation de radicalité à la radicalité islamiste. Et les discours sont d'abord les discours victimistes, les discours complotistes, les discours identitaristes de rupture. Et c'est quand on a ce mixte-là de discours que le sentiment d'humiliation va trouver son issue imaginaire, évidemment, dans une un côté grandiose d'un islam grandiose. Back in the town of Sevran, many people told us they are seen as second-class citizens. Les de plus en plus rabaissés en France que autre part ailleurs. Que ça soit en Angleterre, en Angleterre les musulmans ils vivent très très bien avec toute la, toute la communauté, toutes les populations, ils s'entendent très bien mais en France ils commencent à En France, c'est pas pareil. Le musulman aujourd'hui, il est euh, un peu mal vu. Malheureusement, on, est, on vit dans des contraintes. Euh, ce qui est plus difficile, c'est qu'on n'a pas cette liberté de manifester euh, ce que vraiment euh, notre religion nous, nous demande de faire. Quoi. Au niveau des pratiques de notre euh, religion, il euh, y a des difficultés, il faut le dire. Mais il euh, ne faut pas exagérer quand même des fois. Des fois même nous, on exagère. Nous, les musulmans, nous, en tant que musulmans, c'est vrai, tu as la liberté de, de pratiquer ta religion, mais euh, voilà, il faut respecter. Il faut, faut, faut voir où tu vis, là. Tu, tu vis dans un pays laïque, il faut respecter les réglementaires. Quoi. 
أشهد أن محمد رسول الله. A message echoed by some Muslim leaders who warn marginalization should not lead to extremism nor terrorism. They want their communities to do more to stop it. À un moment donné, nous avons dit, c'est pas possible. On ne peut pas laisser faire un gourou faire ce qu'il veut. Voilà. Et je veux vous dire, nous étions extrêmement minoritaires. Que quelques personnes qui ne dépassent pas les doigts d'une seule main, et c'est du concret ce que je vous dis. Mais il y a un gros travail à faire au sein de la communauté, au sein des musulmans. The Kouachi brothers used to pray here. Two other sons of the Republic who turned against it. They went on to kill 12 people at the office of satirical magazine Charlie Hebdo in January 2015. France has seen more attacks than any other European country. It also has the highest number of radicalized people, 15,000 according to the latest government figures. 80% are over 18 years old, 70% are men, 30% are women, and 36% are converts. 2,000 French citizens have joined groups in Syria and Iraq. 220 have reportedly died there. Hundreds have already returned, but intelligence agencies estimate almost 1,000 people are still fighting alongside Daesh. To avoid more people falling into the trap, France has introduced a $40 million anti-radicalization plan. The internet is one of the main battlegrounds where the government is trying to prevent youths joining terrorist groups and reaching the point of no return. I don't buy the, uh, the radicalization uh, uh, concept. Um, I think um, we can prevent, I think we can divert. Uh, I don't think we can sort of uh, uh, deprogram uh, uh, someone and bring him or her back to uh, the way he or she was uh, 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 before. But it's already too late for some. Veronique shows us the photo album that tracks the path of Contin's life. Smiling, happy, dedicated to his family. But then this, after the Paris attacks. Letters and messages from family and friends begging him to abandon Daesh and come home. And finally, this photo. Contin, the Daesh fighter. All the life gone from his eyes. Not long after it was taken, Veronique received a text message telling her Contin had died in Iraq. Moi, mon fils, je ne sais pas comment il est mort, ce qu'il a fait. Il est parti pour aider des gens. J'espère qu'il a pu le faire. Mais forcément, des Quentins comme lui, il y en a plein. Ou des, des gens qui ont des prénoms musulmans, peu importe, qui ont tué, y compris dans des attentats. Ça aurait pu être lui. Il ne l'a pas fait, Dieu merci, mais ça aurait pu être lui. In his last messages, Quentin defended the Paris attacks as a response to France's war against Daesh's so-called caliphate. He was the son of a loving family, but the son of France, no more. Soraya Lenny for the Newsmakers in Paris.